Welcome to Global Talks by Paw of Life, a podcast about redefining healthcare through a global perspective, allowing you to become informed and involved. In each episode, we deliver the best hard-hitting analysis and discussion of what is currently impacting the healthcare landscape with guests from a variety of industries. Now, here's your host, Pavan Lohia. Welcome back and thank you for tuning in to today's episode about the COVID-19 outbreak, also known as the coronavirus. Over the past several weeks, we've seen the coronavirus rapidly spread from its initial outbreak in China to now infecting over 125 countries across the world. Here in the United States alone, there are now over 5,000 confirmed cases of the coronavirus with at least 86 resulting deaths. Earlier this week, China reported over 80,000 confirmed cases with 3,200 fatalities, and Italy had reported similar figure with over 2,500 deaths due to the coronavirus. The coronavirus is now considered a pandemic, and the realities are starting to hit across the U.S. and across parts of the world. Here in the U.S., We've seen the cancellation of sports like the NBA, the NHL, and the NCAA, as well as the closure of many schools, places of worship, people's jobs, and other social venues. The U.S. is facing a nationwide pandemic scare. We are seeing our health systems and infrastructure being pushed to its absolute limit during a time of crisis. While the number of cases continue to rise both here in the U.S. and around the globe, there are measures that we can take now to prevent the further spread and exposure to the virus. According to the guidelines released by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and World Health Organization, make sure to wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, avoid touching your mouth, eyes, and nose, practice social distancing behaviors, And please remain indoors if you have symptoms that could be flu-like. Another key guideline is to not spread misinformation about the coronavirus. If you are not a healthcare professional or infectious disease expert, please do not share information that may come from unverified and unofficial sources. If you or your loved ones are concerned, please refer them to places like the U.S. Centers of Disease Control, or the World Health Organization. And locally, you can also reach your health agency that will provide you up-to-date information. In order to combat the further spread of this virus, we need to make sure that everyone is receiving accurate and updated information from reliable and trusted sources. That way, people are well-informed and know what precautions to take. As the coronavirus continues to spread, we are also seeing its dramatic impact on the global economy. Markets worldwide have suffered staggering losses in just the past days and now coming weeks. While the world waits for things to go back to normal, it is still important to understand that for the majority of people, the coronavirus is not deadly. Health officials have repeatedly stated that the symptoms are similar to a severe seasonal flu. Even though it's classified as a global pandemic, it is still expected to kill fewer people than influenza does annually. The data so far implies that even if you are diagnosed with coronavirus, you are likely to have mild to no symptoms at all that would require hospitalization. The most vulnerable group of people are those over the age of 70 and those with underlying health conditions such as diabetes, cancer, and other respiratory illnesses. Therefore, it is very important that younger adults practice social distancing measures in order to combat the spread of the coronavirus amongst elder people. In light of this outbreak and its global impact, it ultimately shines a light on our weak public health infrastructure and ability to respond to epidemics and pandemics. Of the many 125 countries that have the coronavirus, they are severely under-equipped to respond to this disease, let alone other basic health services and emergencies. Though the number of cases continue to rise, 
this is still far less deadly than other major disease outbreaks. In the 14th century, the bubonic plague that swept through Europe killed nearly 25 million people. In modern times, killer infections such as malaria claim over 1.5 million lives annually. It claims a life in Africa approximately every 30 seconds. HIV and AIDS claim over 3.5 million lives each year across the globe. According to the CDC, approximately every minute, five new people contract HIV. Still, infectious diseases are the leading cause for death across the globe. They account for nearly 26% of all deaths annually. It's important to understand the other diseases that have been around and that have constantly been a global problem because we are seeing the effects of what the coronavirus has just done over the past several weeks. We have seen the panic it has caused in people from rushing to grocery stores and stockpiling life-saving materials that health professionals desperately need now more than ever. With this in mind, it is important that we make sure we build a resilient public health care infrastructure as well as health care system that is able to deal with epidemics and global pandemics. We do not want to cause panic and worry the citizens of our respective countries of if we will be able to take care of them during a time of crisis. Rampant disease outbreaks and lack of access to care may soon become a norm in the coming years if we are unable to make these changes. The uptick in global disease outbreaks has risen drastically over the past 20 years, with the world population growing to 7 billion. In roughly 10 years, our global population will be 8.2 billion people, and by 2050, we will reach 9.6 billion people, according to the United Nations. As our global population expands, it is only natural that infectious diseases will also become more widespread and more difficult to combat. Though there are six major infectious diseases that account for 90% of all the problems, it is problems like coronavirus that can really bring out the failures of our healthcare systems here in the United States and across the world. While we may think that the coronavirus is widespread and is causing a record number of cases, it is also worth knowing that just in the next hour alone, 1,500 people will die from other infectious diseases, over half of them children under five and the other half working age adults. These are both vital age groups that countries like the United States and China cannot afford to lose. Additionally, infectious diseases are commonly contracted by adults over the age of 60, many of whom who have underlying health conditions. By 2050, approximately one-third of the U.S. population will be over the age of 65, and across the globe, over 2 billion people. These disease outbreaks ultimately stem from the lack of healthcare access, sanitation, poor living conditions, which often then leave people without the resources to protect themselves from these viruses and diseases. There are steps that we can and must implement now to curb the effects of future infectious disease outbreaks upon our populations. Individuals can immediately help by taking steps such as getting vaccinated against certain known diseases, seeking preventative health care, maintaining proper hygiene, and keeping sanitary living conditions. On a broader level, individuals and organizations can advocate for the right to health care access and preventative care through their local elected leaders. Much of the information I've shared today is not meant to scare people into thinking that infectious diseases are going to be the end of the world, but rather it's to highlight the problems that healthcare workers face on a daily basis. We need people to understand that healthcare is not just about being a patient and seeing a physician, but rather it stems from multiple factors that people live through in their daily lives. From the place you live to the place you work to the environment you're brought up in, 
These are all factors that are critical to determining one's health. Although it's not possible to solve every health problem overnight, this is a great opportunity for our country to recognize the problems that exist within our healthcare system and what we can do to get things fixed. Nobody wants to see the repeat of such an epidemic and global pandemic repeat itself in our time, and especially for future generations to come. As updates continually emerge about the coronavirus here in the United States and around the world, I will do my best to make sure I provide the most updated and accurate information through my podcast and my articles. If you need further information for your family, friends, or other loved ones, please be sure to get your information from the Centers of Disease Control, the World Health Organization, or by contacting your local health agency. Lastly, please make sure to stay safe, practice healthy behaviors, and keep your social distance for the next few weeks. Till next time, thank you. Thanks for joining this episode of Global Talks by Pav Life with Pavan Lohia. Make sure to visit pavlife.com where you can also subscribe to the podcast and read the Pav Life blog. For perspectives and news on everything healthcare, you simply can't get anywhere else. Share your thoughts on the show by rating the show and by connecting with us on social media. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next episode.